Hello, folks. Welcome to the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. You know, I always love for you guys to head over to the mainlypinteresttips.com and subscribe to the email community. That way you'll never miss a great guest like we have for you today. You can also now text Mainly Pinterest Tips to 33444 to sign up for that list to find out about the guests and when they're coming up. Today's show is sponsored by the Visual Social Media Conference. If you need some in-depth training with some of the greats of the visual social media space, head on over to, to uh, visualsocialmediaconference.com. Now, if you've been on Pinterest at all the last couple of years, you've probably seen some products and pins from my guest today. We're going to be talking all about pinning products today with my guest, Tori Tate from the, from the Gromit. Uh, Tori is the Director of Content and Community at thegromit.com. She joined the team five years ago, and she's helped shape the company's communications and marketing strategy with her expertise in social media, content strategy, blog management, and community building. Um, some of the most in innovative, exciting products and the makers, and we're going to talk about the makers later on today, inventors, entrepreneurs behind them, they deserve a voice. And that's where the Gromit comes in. They discover consumer products and help them succeed by amplifying their stories, messaging over 2 million consumers through email marketing, activating social, me activating social media and traditional media. And one of their key channels is Pinterest. And since 2011, Tori has been leading the Gromit their Pinterest strategy, strategy being one of the first brands on the platform, the first brand to run a sweepstakes on Pinterest, and a leader in the Pinterest marketing space. And so, I'm Tori, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hey, Jeff. So glad to be here. I'm such a big fan of the show. And any excuse to talk about Pinterest, um, sign me up. So happy to be here today. Awesome, awesome. So, as I'm talking with Tori, if you have any of us, any of you guys in the live audience have any questions, make sure to enter those in the comments, and I will pull them up on screen, and we'll try to get to those and answer your questions uh, today during the show. So, we're going to jump right into it. So, Tori, tell me a little bit about your background and kind of how you ended up at the Gromit. Yeah, so a little bit of a you know dotted line that kind of went in circles. Um, I thought I wanted to be a teacher. So I tried that for a couple of years and realized that wasn't for me. Um, right after that, I decided to start my own business, um, selling, creating and selling personalized stationery. Mm. So this was before pretty papery. It was all over Etsy. Right. There was pretty blogs. There was no Instagram. Um, and I really just couldn't find the type of product I wanted to purchase. So I decided to make it. So um, I spent about a year and a half building a business. Um, I learned really quickly what I was good at and what I was passionate about and really quickly what I wasn't. And it was not manufacturing or logistics right. or the administrative side of business. Um, it was really about building a brand, um, creating a digital community and making the sell. And so I parlayed that into offering social media marketing services and content creation for other small businesses um, back in 2006. 2007, um, the, Gr the Gromit became one of my clients. They were a very small team. Um, and then in 2009, when they got their first round of funding, they offered me uh, a full-time seat um, with the team, and I've been there ever since. Wow, very, very cool. That's that's an awesome, an awesome uh, kind of story. So for people who maybe not familiar with what the Gromit is and the products they offer, what exactly is the Gromit? What do they, what do they specialize in? Yep. So we're an online marketplace. Um, we discover consumer products and we help them succeed by first giving them a voice, telling their story, and then giving them the platform, um, the audience that, that they can't reach alone. So we tell the story behind each product every day through video storytelling, um, through content on site. And then we amplify these stories to over, you know, over 2 million consumers through daily email through our social media channels, through traditional press outreach. Um, and then we also invite the maker every day to join us live on site to answer questions directly from our community. So we're giving our makers um, a voice and a platform for success. And then we're giving consumers uh, access to new product ideas and direct access to the people behind them. Awesome. And so we call them grommets, our products. So the products are called grommets. And so uh, and they're and they're curated by your team, right? So it's not just anybody can go and say, "I want to be on," um, uh, you know, on the grommet. It's actually picked by your kind of creative team, right? 
Correct. So we have uh, a team of experts we call our discovery team, and they really make up the, the meat of our company, and they have a really tough job. So they are fielding um, new product submissions that come to us directly from makers and entrepreneurs creating the products um, from people, consumers who want us to know about these products. Um, they think that they're worth our attention and then their own you know, efforts of um, scouring the corners of the world looking for the best new products. And then they put them through this rigorous test of, um, you know, does it deliver? Is there a story? Is there um, what are the people like behind these products? And they look through hundreds and hundreds a week. And we only launch three percent of all of the ones that they consider. Wow. Um, so it's a really tough job. But you 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 can rest assured that when we send you the email each day that that product is is really worth your attention. So what would be the the typical time frame? Let's say um, I submitted some widget that was awesome, some manly you know thing and like today it was great because uh you had a it was called the um truckers t uh something it was an axe it was a cool axe that had all this cool stuff on it um so what what's the time frame from uh like let's say i i'm the maker and i love how you call them the makers with the capital m i think that is just awesome um so the maker submits it to you you guys approve it how long is the process before it actually starts showing up on the uh, the website I think it really varies. The conversations will happen quickly um, behind the scenes with our team, and we'll work together to figure out sort of, you know, if we think that this is in fact a grommet, that your product is a grommet, we want to launch it. You know, those conversations happen pretty quickly, and then we talk about like the best timing. So, especially if it's something kind of more seasonal, or maybe it'd be better launched in the winter months or the summer months. Um, the behind the scenes happens quickly, but um on site you know we only launch one a day there's only so many slots on a, on a yearly calendar so it might not turn up for a bit um i love that you brought up today's product so it's called trucker's friend that's it yeah and um uh, it was the stars aligned for today's show and that launch but a great example of what i'm you know our makers so i know you asked me before like why why do you call them makers or what is a maker right. um, i think that term is probably more widely used now than years ago when we were using it, mm -hmm. but um, mainly what you would call a garage tinker maybe a decade ago. Um, it's men and women, uh, entrepreneurs and inventors using new tools, um, new technology and creating good products, new products. And today's maker um, is proof that any age, any background can create a new product. So he's a 96 year old inventor um, World War II hero, turn farmer, turn inventor, who just wanted to have uh, a good multi-tool on hand. And so he made one. And it's like part ax, part claw, part crowbar, right. um, hammer. So it, it's really great and perfectly timed for today. <laughs> That's right, for the Bailey Pinterest Show. It's, and, it's a, and it's really cool. And I didn't know he was 96. Holy cow. That's amazing. Um, but the cool thing is, like, if you go to their website today, it's right on their front page. Um, and there's a story kind of behind it, the video, which is really cool. Um, and I, I guess one of the cool things, and and you can talk about this a little bit, is how how the Gromit partners with its makers. Because it seems not, it's like it's, okay, we submitted a product, we're going to fill up your, your warehouse, and we're going to sell the thing. It's It seems like you guys really develop a relationship with the maker and yourselves and, and really kind of work together. Definitely. I mean, when we work with a maker and bring them on to launch their product, it's it's a commitment. It's a commitment to them that we find your story compelling and your product um, important enough to commit ourselves to. So you won't just see it on launch day. You know, we're not a flash site. It's not going to go down tomorrow. It's going to become part of our catalog. It's going to go into, you know, our merchandise planning and we're going to resurface and retell your story as much as we can. Um, so it's definitely our makers become part of our Gromit family. And I, I read this on an article and, and you kind of mentioned it. It's almost, there's a lot of similarities between that and like a Kickstarter or Indiegogo kind of a thing. Isn't there kind of, uh, you kind of taking these people and really getting them known? Yeah, so we like to think of ourselves as like the place a maker would go after they've successfully crowdfunded. crowdfunded. Okay. So um, it's great to have all the money and be able to, create all these units of your product now, but how are you going to sell them? Most mm -hmm. makers 
um, the size that we're the companies that we're talking about, they don't have that platform. They don't have that reach. Um, we do. We have a community. You know, one in two hundred Americans receive our communications, and you know, in every day they see the products that we're launching. So we can bring that exposure and and uh, help you get to that place you you want to be and move those move those units right. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. So, you know, we kind of read your, your kind of bio at the beginning, but what does a director or con of content and community do? What what does that mean, your role there at the Gromit? Yeah, um, good question. So <laughs> I, I lead um, content strategy across all of our editorial content on site that sort of goes beyond um, what we do for each launch day. So things like our gifting catalogs, um, our blog content, I'm leading uh, all of the strategy behind our social media, any um, sort of like brand partnerships and promotions we might do. I'm working really closely with the marketing team and with all of our other teams to make sure everything we produce has this really clear and consistent point of view and voice and, and is the grommet. Um, right. And I also manage all of our social media channels. I've done that from day one. Um, so if you tweet with us, you got me behind there. Um, very cool. So, okay, big picture, because, you know, and we you kind of talked about this a little bit on Pin Chat the other day, which is uh, Kelly Lieberman is in the audience. So thanks, Kelly, for stopping by. Uh, and if you haven't been to Pin Chat, you need to go over there, and it happens on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central. Awesome stuff about Pinterest. But anyway, you were on Pin Chat a couple weeks ago, and then this last Pin Chat, too. Um, but one of the questions that was asked is, how has Pinterest helped change the way consumers uh, discover products? Yeah, I think I think it's changed in a big way. Um, one faster, right? So Pinterest has made it a lot faster for us to find both what we're looking for and what we didn't know we were looking for. Okay. Um, and I, I think that's really the key of why it's evolved to sort of become the new way we search for things. Um, it's super visual, right? And I think I, I read somewhere one time that our brains process images 60,000 times faster than words. Right. And if I'm looking for a great gift for my mom or a great new lamp for my living room, I go to Pinterest. Like there's no question about it. And um, so faster, right? So, right. and then also I think the quality of discovering new products is higher on Pinterest because based on who you follow, um, and what people are pinning, it's gonna return like things other people have found beautiful, interesting, cool enough to pin. Nobody wants to pin junk. Nobody's really pinning junk to their personal boards. So right. it's like the editing has already been done for you and you're really just getting the most beautiful, cool new products um, right in your results. Right, and you know, another, and that same kind of subject, I know a lot of like food bloggers, they don't even go to Google, you know, to, see what's going on they they go to pinterest first and do a search there before they go to to you know to find a new recipe or whatever so it's yeah. really kind of changing uh you know even the owners of i mean the creators of pinterest have said that it's not really a social media platform it's like a dis a discovery or a place to plan your future and I, I know the grommet taps into that because you know that's where you can discover new things and and see what products are doing well as well mm -hmm. um so you mentioned that you launch a product every day and you kind of went like oh it's not a big deal we launch a product every day i mean i was like wow that's that's still a lot of work going on just to launch a product every day i'm sure there's um a big kind of you know process that goes through but um how do you come up with new products i mean how you, you mentioned your discovery team how do they uh, you know i'm sure that season fact seasonal stuff factors into that but what are some other ways that they come up and find new products yeah, so the great news for our business is that there are no shortage of new product ideas. People are creating more than ever before. A record amount of patents are filed every year. Um, so it really is the task of sorting through it all, right? And so we rely, you know, one, I did mention our discovery team is actively looking and picking up the phone and, and um, finding new products. But we, a big part of that, we rely on our community. Mm -hmm. um, to tell us about what products they think are important and we should know about and make their lives easier or, you know, our cool new way of doing things. Right. And so a lot of our um, submissions come 
from our community. They also come directly from Pinterest. So um, back in 2012, I believe we created a group board um, just for that exact reason. I mean, it just made sense. People were on Pinterest discovering and sharing products that they were interested in. And that's exactly what we need. Uh, so it was this a channel just to make it easier for our community to share with us. You know, before it was like, email us and let us know or submit right. this form on site. And now it's like, simply join our group board. And as you find stuff, pin it and we're looking. And so um, it really has changed the way that we can quickly, again, quickly scan um, and look at what people are finding interesting. So, so it's almost like user generated content. You're seeing what, you know, what's going on now. Do you, when people like, let's say I pinned a new type of, I don't know, a uh, cup holder and I pinned it to that board. So do you say, okay, we need to find new cup holders or do you contact the person who made that new cup holder that, that pins based on, or how does that kind of process work? I think uh, a little bit of both. So okay. sometimes we'll see kind of like trends or maybe um, if we see the same type of product, maybe it's like, a certain type of cup holder over and over and over. Maybe it's the problem that really is resonating. People are trying to find a solution for. Um, mm -hmm. So it can signal like a type of product, but often, yeah, it's it's that exact product. Um, in the early years of that group board, um, we had were noticing um, one particular type, of, one particular product was being pinned by multiple people in our community. It's like, to us, that's just a big social signal. Like, take a look at this. Like. Our community is already saying that they're interested in it, that they want us to know about it. And by the fact that they keep pinning and all the repins, like we know they're going to support it. And so we launched it. It was It's called Kapow, and it's basically a plastic lid. It's everywhere now, but right, it's right. a plastic lid that fits the top of your mason jar to turn it into a sippy cup or a travel cup. Right. And um, that was submitted to us years ago through our community board. We, you know, vetted it and we went through all of the same processes as other ideas and our discovery team said, yes, you know, let's launch this. This is a grommet. And then it, it was like full circle. We launched it and then our, all of our community pinned it and it is still to this day, our most pinned product ever. So that was a great combination of the social triggers coming to us because our community was telling us, Hey, pay attention. And then like the great trend collide with the trend of the Mason jar uh -huh. um, that just made it so pin worthy. So, um, yeah. Very cool. So, uh, and one of my, I mean, just personally, one of my favorite kind of things are, are life hacks or, you know, there's, I mean, I even have a life hack board on my Pinterest thing where I, but it's, it's, it's for you guys, your products, they're not just cool products. They're actually solving some sort of a problem like the Mason jar kind of thing. You know, people wanted to have their own jars for their babies and you know, all that stuff. And so that's what I think is so cool and, and such a cool niche you guys have. They're actually life hacks that actually solve a problem. It's just not a cool Star Wars USB or something. It's something right. that solves a problem. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, our problem solving board, so you have a board, pin, mm -hmm. Pinterest board, that's where our problem solver items get pinned. And it is our most uh, popular board in terms of repins off that board. So uh, it, that topic really resonates, that category of products of how can you know, how can this product, it, how is it a better mousetrap? How can yeah. it do something better? How can it solve a problem in my life and improve my day to day? Those products do really well. Very cool. So um, do you guys take all your own photography? Do you have an indoor, I mean, like an internal photography team that you send out to the, to the makers or, or they come there and they come for a photo shoot or how, how do, how do you come with up with the imagery for your pins and, and also on different social media channels? Yeah, so we do have um, our own media team in house, and then we do also work with uh, makers, uh, especially if they're not a local to our to our area, um, to get some of that founder footage or those behind the scenes images of them in their space. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the product product shots you see and the lifestyle shots you see are taken by our team, and they're really great. Um, we've been having a lot of conversations lately about um, taking specific images for Pinterest. So based on what we're seeing working and what type of imagery is resonating, how can that influence actually the pictures that we're taking of the products themselves? So do you have, uh, do you have any like tips or advice or what you found of the images that work best for like your product pins that there are certain type or colors or is yeah. it, you know, you mentioned lifestyle set settings is what works best for you guys for uh, traffic with th those pins? 
Yeah, um, I was hoping you asked this question because th this is the kind of geeky stuff I love. Right. So we've been paying a lot of attention to that. Um, so how, what images are resonating with people? Mm -hmm. um, and one, the one sort of common denominator across all, all images is product understanding. So there's so many variables when, when I go to create a pin right. from the actual product, is that even going to resonate on Pinterest? Is this a Pinteresty type product? Um, to the background, is there text overlay? Is there no text overlay? It, how long is it? How short is it? What is the description going to be? There's so many things that yeah. it's really hard to pinpoint what works and doesn't work. But what we have found is if we can convey quickly in a, one image or maybe a series of images in a small collage, what the product does, um, it works really well. So I printed out an example. Don't oh. laugh at me. Okay. <laughs> Here's an example of product understanding. If you can see my poor quality. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. So this is um, a product called Key Smart, and it basically takes your wad of keys and turns it into this nice little pocket size tool you can put in your pocket. So, so if we've been focusing a lot on that. Like, how can someone who's quickly scanning? No one has time to click, right? Unless right, right. we know if you click, it, you're engaged with the content, and you're you're interested, right. um, or you'll repin it for later and come back. Right. But we we don't want to make you think about it. So if we can quickly convey why our product is useful or interesting um that's doing really well yeah and <laughs> just i saw that before i even knew i was gonna have you on the show that showed up in my feed on pinterest and i did pin it to my uh oh. manly you know my manly uh i have a, a guy stuff board which i think is just cool stuff for guys and i was like that'll work you know from <laughs> just what you just said because it showed what problem it solves instantly and you know i think you know people go oh that's that's easy to do but it's not I mean, it. You have to have some creativity to think. Okay, and it takes a lot of thinking when you're setting up that photo shoot. Okay, how can I convey this in the short amount of time possible and still make it a pleasing image? I mean, that's not easy to do. And and the point is to offer the most value, right? Like we don't want to waste your time. I use Pinterest like a mad person personally. Right. And what what really irks me is like you know I see someone I follow pin something to their board. It's like this whole outfit or scene. And I don't know what they found interesting. I want to know, like if you add in the description, like killer shoes and killer deal or, you know, whatever, I instantly am like, thank you. Like that's value to me. But if yeah. I got to look at that image and try to figure out what's going on, I'm just going to scroll down. Now I can't remember because I, I was, when I pinned it, but do you do text overlays on yours or do you just do that, that little, like what you just showed me on that printout that it's, um, it's just the showing what the product does. Yeah, so we've been testing a, uh, quite a bit with some text overlays with the expanded pins. Mm -hmm. We've been amping up some of the promoted, well, we've really been amping up the promoted pins we're doing. And so we're testing um, that quick sort of line if it's needed to help you with the understanding or imagine how that product might fit into your life. Um, we have been doing, um, try to keep it simple, try not to make it too in your face or branded, but um, if it adds value to the image, then we will add that line of text, and, and we're still testing. We'll see how it, how it works. Yeah, and see, I geek out on this kind of stuff too, and so um, I think all this stuff is fascinating on what works, what makes people pin, uh, click on it, and and pin it. Um, and uh, some advice is, you know, follow people like the Gromit, see what they're doing, see what you know. I follow Target. Uh, I even follow some other things that you know, I really, I'm not interested in, but I love their images, and see how they're doing it, and see how they're testing stuff. I mean, Target, you know, they would pin, you know, a something like on a white background, but then yeah. they'd also pin that same product in a big lifestyle setting too, showing kind of like what you were talking about, how it works. So follow those people and and, and learn from them and see what they're doing because the smart ones are always, just like you said, are always testing. So Yeah, definitely. Um, the next question I was going to ask you was, um, you, and you kind of touched on it just uh, a little bit, but how, do you, and with your group boards, but can you predict what, what's going to be successful uh, on Pinterest by kind of seeing what kind of the trends are. I mean, you mentioned your group board, um, but does Pinterest kind of let you predict what products are going to be successful maybe at a, in a certain time of the year or something like that? Um, yeah. So I think in a way, I mean, uh, you're, you know, you're asking specifically successful on Pinterest. Right. So I think based on the fact that I'm like an avid Pinterest user, right. I can sometimes see when we launch a product and the images we have like, Oh, that might fall flat or might not, but sometimes our community surprises the heck out of me, and they start pinning, you know, pinning a product or like one skew photo. 
that isn't even the product I thought would take off um, over and over and over and over and over again. And so sometimes they put me in check, like you don't know what you're talking about. But right. I, I do think that, you know, if it has a quick product understanding, if it has anything to do with a trend, if it collides at all with a trend, you know, a mason jar is kind of an obvious example. Another one would be a product called Lettermate, which we launched, which is like a little stencil that goes mm -hmm. on top of your envelopes and allows you to kind of like fake calligraphy or like have really yeah. great presentation. Um, the images were killer for that. It was very Pinteresty. Um, I knew that would do well. So sometimes, yeah, uh, we can kind of predict. Other times, you know, it's our community decides. It's really the truth. Okay. We can so tell quickly after we've launched the product, you know, every, so every day we launch a product and we pin the image or combination of images surrounding that product. And then, you know, three days later, we look back and see how did that do on Pinterest? And so every week I'm reporting on of all the products we launched last week, which ones traveled the most, which images were people clicking on the most. So I, it's not so much that we focus on predicting, it's that we try to learn from what happened and then use that information in sort of the broader marketing effort. Gotcha, gotcha. So, and I, I probably already know the answer to this question, but so how does Pinterest factor into your your boosting e-commerce? I mean, does it, how does it rank compared to other social networks for producing sales for the grommet? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's all about amplification, right? And so, for us that it, it's just a great support system for what we're trying to do, which is launch new products and help them succeed, help them get to that wider audience. And Pinterest, you know, once we actually, we our products were already being shared and, and all over Pinterest when it was in beta. And that's why we right. jumped on. And it just, it's like this natural extension of our effort and it's never slowed down. Um, you know, it's really important. I would say Pinterest is in our top 10 uh, revenue uh, awesome. sales channels and in and, and that 10 is daily email and search. So that's no small, small Perfect. number. And then uh, as far as potential, it's probably our m highest potential channel right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. And we're focusing a lot on testing there and, and it just, it's where people share products and it's where people go to discover products. And so it just makes sense for our content to work so beautifully there. Very cool. So, um, and you mentioned this a little bit, but how have you, and it's, and it's, to be honest, in the, the scheme of things, it's real, still relatively new, but how are you using kind of promoted pins in the promotion of your products? Are you seeing, okay, this is going really well, I'm going to amplify it even more with some promoted uh, pins, or are you doing it kind of blanket to all of them when they first launch? How's kind of your promoted pin strategy now that that's rolled out for people? Yeah, so we we don't promote everything um, that launches, but we do look for those like social signals. So what products are doing really well um, on Pinterest already organically, and then we'll boost those pins or think about maybe we can improve that actual pin of that image. Maybe we can make a variation of that. Um, this key smart that I showed you is a great example. It's one of our most successful promoted pins, it, but it was organically Go, like taking off like wildfire. So we knew that people were repinning it, they were clicking on it, and they were converting when they came to site without any ads. So just getting it in front of more people um, made sense. And so we do look for those social signals from the organic behavior and then amplify those with the promoted pins. Awesome, awesome. Um, the other question I wanted to ask kind of on that same line, um, when you see something that's doing well on Pinterest, do you use that to kind of boost it on like other channels? Like, like say something like that key smart thing was doing really good on Pinterest. You say, I'm going to see if that's going to do well on Facebook or on my email marketing channel. Do you, do you use Pinterest kind of, kind of to, uh, to, to see what's going to work and does that usually translate to other channels? Yeah, um, definitely. So we do a lot of testing. Well, first we like to do a lot of, um, kind of closing that circle with our community. So, you know, we ask them to support products that you care about every day, whether you purchase them or share them. Sharing is really meaningful for us too. And so kind of circling back and letting them know, like these were the top pin products from you, our community this month. We do that in an email format. Um, that also sort of signals to the community like, hey, 
don't forget to pin your products. We're watching, right? It's meaningful behavior, and we're you know really thankful you're doing it, and it helps our makers get in front of more people. Um, but we're also looking on Pinterest, like what images are people clicking on, and then what can we do with that information? So we've done some testing where, um, like with our display advertising, where before we would just pick an image from our site that we think is compelling and people would click on, but if we have the data from Pinterest that actually this image people are clicking on a lot, like it's already taking out the guesswork. So we've done tests where we where we've done our display advertising using those images that people are clicking on already on Pinterest. And when we did that, we saw like a 50% higher click through rate. Um, so for us, it's just looking, how can we take what's going on on Pinterest and, and let that inform other things we're doing? Very cool, very cool. Um, now, you mentioned you guys have a huge email marketing. Uh, you, you, you send out, have a huge list and you send out a lot of stuff that way. So how does Pinterest factor into that? I, I know I think you guys do some special thing with uh, what's popular on Pinterest every week that you send out, am I correct? Or, or how does that work um, with your email marketing? Yeah, we do at least once a month um, in one of our Sunday newsletters, the top sh socially shared image um, of all of the products that launched that month. Okay. Um, we found for us that that so, like giving that social proof um, does really well. Like people want to know what other people love, right? right. And so um, it, that message really resonates with our community. And so sometimes we'll talk about specifically about top pinned products. Like we've done email. Full emails is like, you know, the top 10 pin products of the summer or something like that. Okay. Um, but on a regular basis, we put it in at least once a month to sort of let them know, um, you know, what's yeah. taking off, what people are pinning the most. We'll also, um, in some of that editorial content on our site, like on our gifting page or on our homepage, you know, we'll put in, um, you know, a block like what's popular on Pinterest and we'll link to a collection um, that showcases all the products that have been pinned, you know, or sort of on fire on Pinterest. Gotcha. So, um, and we mentioned this in the bio, you're one of the first uh, companies to run contests and some promotions on Pinterest. So what are some benefits for, from doing that on Pinterest, the Pinterest platform? And what have you kind of learned about how that works? Because uh, I'm real fascinated on how people are running contests on Pinterest. Yeah. So it works a lot differently than it did Five years ago, um, we've run we ran one or two a year for the consistently for the past you know probably four years. Mm -hmm. And as Pinterest has evolved as a platform and their terms and their rules, right. as have our strategy behind our promotions. But at the the bottom line is the point for us the goal normally is uh, something fun, deliver something fun and engaging to our community. That's always any type of promotion we run on Pinterest or not. That's the the underlining goal. Right. Um, and then each one is built a little bit, has been built a little bit differently and has worked a little bit differently. But the main sort of success of it is I think of it of launching a Pinterest promotion or contest where we we ask people to come to a page on our site and pin an image or pick an image to pin. Right. Um, it's like doing a giant cannonball into a pool. Right. And so it, it's really fun, right? And it causes right. this big splash, but then it also produces all of these ripples. So when we do offer something fun, you know, enter to win a $500 gift card, pin your favorite summer product from this page and you'll be entered to win. It really is about giving them something fun, but what it does is it just gets people pinning and people think the the people who came to that from our community, from our email list or from our social channels kind of reminds them Oh yeah, like I want to pin some stuff and I want to win something. This is really fun. But then it, you know, all of those pins go and live on Pinterest and the ripples just begin. So it's a great way to deliver value and, and do something engaging to your community. And then it's a great way to get this uptick in organic repinning behavior because your images are just sort of trickling out there in that pool. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and I have changed their terms of service. So it's always interesting to figure out, okay, what can I do for this contest now compared to what I did, you know, earlier. So it keeps it, hey, it keeps us interesting. I'm <laughs> all about like, I, hey, it's not our playground, right? So right. Um, as long as we're offering value and we're abiding by the rules, like I'm willing to, to right. tweak and tell something new. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I know you guys just don't pin your own, um, um, 
products. It's not your own products all the time. You kind of have a mix on other things too. I know you do some recipes of your makers and things like that. So what other kind of stuff, content do you mix in besides just your products? Yeah. Um, so, you know, mix in um, DIY type projects. So you know, nothing really, you know, extraordinary right. and new that you, you probably can guess, you know, DIY projects, you know, we know that our community also likes to get their hands on and make things. Maybe they're not going to make the next grommet. They're not right. going to make a business, but they like to, you know, handcraft some things and, and get their hands dirty. So we, we pin those, we don't create that type of content. So, you know, we look to others, other bloggers, other people out there. Um, and we'll, we'll, pin that, repin that. And then also recipes, you know, we're not cooking in our kitchen, but we know right. people like to eat and we like to eat. So, you know, we have a, a, a favorite recipes board, um, a travel board, you know, we not, you know, we want you thinking about our, say our travel products, but we want, we want you to think about our products fitting into your life and mm -hmm. you are far more than just a person who shops online. So, you know, we just try to think of what our community would like to see. Um, and then we pin that, so try to mix that in. I think that's a good point because otherwise, you know, you would seem like you're just spamming all the time. And I, and it, but the, the other thing is it always matches your brand. Like I went there today and looked and in one of the things, and I know it wasn't a product you made, but you guys had pinned a, uh, a it was a really cool uh, shelf made out of wine racks. And that was just a DIY thing that you guys had pinned to share with your community because it fit your brand. You know, just like I pin, you know, I pin your stuff on my boards because it's manly stuff and it's like something about the grill or a, a new ax or something and it fits my brand. So I think that's a good point too, that it's okay to pin stuff that you know your audience would want because the, the main thing you're trying to do is build value for your audience. So yes, definitely. I've got a question and my comment tracker is going wonky on me, but Elisa Meredith asked this, she goes, uh, do you guys make use uh, much use of rich pins and price decrease emails? Cause you know, if you, have a price rich pin. If, if the price drops, it actually sends you guys, it sends out an email. Do you guys use that? Yeah, that's a good question. So we do have rich pins, but um, we don't actually utilize them that way because we don't ever discount our products. So you won't see our prices changing. Mm -hmm. um, you will rarely see something like go on sale or, um, you know, we really stick to the best price. We don't try to we try to bring the most value to each of our makers. So we don't do sales or promotions frequently. So we don't do those types of emails, but we do do the rich pins because of the extra value it gives the pinner, right? You can quickly see the price and, and description. Right. right. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks for that question, Elisa. A um, couple more questions before we, we wrap things up, but um, is there any special tools that you, you, you use for your pinning that you can't, do without something that you you kind of use every day uh, to manage your Pinterest account. Definitely. So we use a tool called Curulate. So it would be applicable for a medium to larger size business, not for right. like our makers aren't using the tool. Um, but they offer us just rich data and analytics about what's going on with our images. Um, and you know, we use that to inform us on what the top images were for the week, what's most trending, um, what are people clicking on, what are people clicking on that are leading to sales. And it's just a really great visual dashboard. So what I love about Pinterest, you can quickly scan and see, uh, they do that with analytics. So I can quickly scan and see and sort um, what's going on on Pinterest. And we've been with them for quite a few years um, and they 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 knock it out of the park. Awesome, awesome. Um, and I ask this question for all of my guests on the show is, do you have any advice for guys who are just getting started on Pinterest? You know, cause this is the manly Pinterest tip show. So what advice would you give guys who are getting on Pinterest? Uh, okay, fun one. Um, I would say based on the data that I have that one of our most followed boards is gifts for guys that we women need a little bit of help finding out what you want. So I would say for any guy from a personal standpoint who's using Pinterest, um, don't be afraid to pin stuff that you want for you so that we don't have to guess. Um, I mean, it's just such a, I mean, it's like one of the top searches on Pinterest too. Like we just want to find what to buy for guys. So we do it. You know, I would say, I think the obvious one would be men go look at your wives and sisters and mothers boards and buy them exactly what they want. Exactly. You know that already, but help us buy, for you and be a great gift giver to you 
and pin some of those grommets that you're spying to your board and we'll you know get them for Christmas. See, that's really cool because I've said that before and you switched it up on us. So that's that's awesome. Um, and so yeah, I have a lot of actually grommets on my board for people to uh, for hopefully my wife and kids to get me. But did you hear that, uh, everyone? Who shops with Jeff? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so uh, Tori, where where can we find out about uh, more about you and the grommet and your services? Kind of give us a wrap up where we can find find out more about you. Yeah. So I would say visit our homepage and you're going to get a quick glance at all the recent products we've launched. Uh, if you're a maker and you have a product that you want us to know about, um, you can click right in the top left of our homepage and submit your idea. You can pin it. You can tweet us. Um, I am behind, again, all of our social channels. So find us anywhere at the Gromit on any platform. And if you want to geek out more about Pinterest, my personal Twitter account is Hostess Tori. And you can tweet me there. Awesome. And as always, guys, I'd love for you to go over to manlypinteresttips.com. Subscribe to our email community so you can find out more about the guests that we have on our show. Thanks so much for Tori for being on here. I know, Tori, I want to have you on again because there's so much more things I want to ask you uh, just, for, for, uh, just from this conversation, and it's been awesome. So uh, head over to manlypinteresttips.com because there we are always adding testosterone one pin at a time. See you next time, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone.